Okay, folks, let's get this show on the road. I have got in my hands the uh, three books I'm going to be reviewing today. They are the Cyberfrog 2 Supplementals. So basically, here's what happened. Um, Ethan Van Skyver ran his Cyberfrog 2 campaign on Indiegogo. I wound up with not just Wreck Planet, but Salamandroid, Death Sting. And I got Heartsick Horror. This was the uh, Halloween offering. And then Cyberfrog 2 deleted scenes. So that was basically threatening to show uh, various scenes that had been cut, but had, yet he had a fondness enough for them that he thought, ah, you know, if I can get an artist to draw these and just go ahead and present these in, in some sort of format, then maybe people like reading what almost might have gotten into Cyberfrog 2 Rec Planet. Let's see. First thing we're going to go through is Salamandroid Death Sting. Now, Salamandroid Death Sting by far is the best of the three books. Of the three supplementals, if you're going to get one of them, get this one. Because it's actually pretty essential. And it's essential because it gives background material that you do not expect coming. It's, it's background material you know you wanted. If you've read Cyberfrog Blood Honey and if you've read Cyberfrog 2 uh, Wreck Planet... This is supplemental material that you definitely want. And part of it kind of answers some questions about Cyberfrog's origins. I'm going to try and be spoiler-free about the whole thing, about all the books that I'm uh, talking about today. But uh, it contains information about Cyberfrog's origins that you didn't know you wanted or that you had no idea you would ever see. Uh so that when I'm actually looking at it, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, this is exactly the kind of supplemental material that I was wanting for a book like this. Uh, so Death Sting uh, comes highly recommended, but the only problem with it is that once it gets to the present day, because it starts off in the past, and it starts off by saying that there is a there was a first iteration of the Cyberfrog experiment that the Perdani race sent to Earth. Uh, Chelsin was not the first to carry these Perdani embryos in her cybernetic womb to come to Earth and have them merge with Earth fauna in order to uh, produce the weapons that Earth would need in order to counter the Vespa's invasion. Rather, uh, there was a there was a previous iteration, and when you see that iteration and you see how it almost went right and then went horribly wrong. It's completely entertaining. I mean, that portion of it, uh, which also ties into the origin of Scorpion, who's one of the major characters in the book and in Wrecked Planet, it's uh, it, it's very fulfilling to see that. So, so Salamandroid Death Sting, if you uh, do have Cyberfrog 2 Wrecked Planet and you uh, have not picked up this book, this supplemental book, I highly recommend picking that up. Um, now, I pick. I, I highly recommend it, picking it up for the first portion of it. The second portion of it, however, falls a little flat. And let me just remind myself here if there's more than one story or if this is just Salamandroid Death Sting. Oh, yeah, it's just Salamandroid Death Sting. Plus, there's a few of these, uh, like, kind of different character trait things. Like, here you have a thing on Scorpion, or, well, hold on, Scorpion. Uh, Demenope, Chakroach, various characters and stuff. And honestly, these come across a little bit document cardish. <laughs> they don't they don't give you a whole lot of information about uh, the various characters, just a little bit here and there. But one one uh, item that I did notice is that we finally get to learn in this one, and I kind of be like, you know, tisk tisk, shame on you. You really don't need to be presenting information in the supplementals that you. Uh, can't get from the book or that you shouldn't have already offered in the book by now, but we actually have a character called Dystopia. And if she looks familiar, it's because she is the witch type character from uh, Cyberfrog 2 Red Planet. She's that Anne O'Malley, who is, uh, according to this, is a high school friend of Heather Swain, which did not come across at all in Wrecked Planet. I mean, it came across more that they ran into each other when they were you know, in Collins' commune. And so I don't know where whether this is actually canonical or not. 
But um, apparently she was a cyber frog villain called Dystopia back in the day, but we have no idea of that uh, just looking at her in Wrecked Planet. But the sole story that is in here is Salamandroid Death Sting, and it starts by looking at the past and looking at the failed Perdani experiment, and then uh, the, the failed Perdani experiment, and then jumps to the, la the tail end of Blood Honey, where Cyberfrog is uh, getting himself wrecked, <laughs> basically, uh, which, ba which is what sends him into su suspended tw uh, animation for 20 years. And we get to see it all from Salamandroid's perspective. And this is where the book starts going on a downward arc, uh, which is sad because at, after such a strong start at the beginning, um, to have it start falling off a cliff is kind of disheartening. And the reason it falls off a cliff is because it presents Salamandroid with a choice. Does he abandon the Perdani experiment and just basically go his own way and try to forge his own path along with multiple other characters from the Cyberfrog mythos and just try to establish a, you know, a new world with uh, coexisting with the Vespas or something? Or does he stay true to the cause? Does he stay true to Cyberfrog, whom he now thinks is dead? because he just saw him get blown up in a bomb. And the problem is, is we never see Salamandroid actually challenged by any of that. We don't see him go through a process of coming to a conclusion, even though we see the conclusion. And we know the conclusion just from what we see in Cyberfrog 2 Wreck Planet, if you haven't read that already. But to not have that process on display and say, oh, okay, based on this factor, based on that factor, here is the here is the path that I'm going to take. It's almost like that portion of the story, the internal struggle, is completely left out. And it, it really needed to be shown in here. So we so we get kind of a we get kind of a hey, here's the setup, here's your choice, here's here's the struggle I want you to go through. Now I'm not going to show you any of the struggle, you're just going to come to a conclusion. And I feel like there's there's a lot of meat that got left out of the book in that respect. So uh, so that's you know although I highly recommend Salamandroid uh, Death Sting for the first portion of the book in which you see this, the 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 background material uh, the 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 information you you always wanted but never knew you'd get in any way shape or form uh, the rest of the book does fall flat in that respect. So I'm not saying it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but you really do need to have it if you're going to be completist about knowing what goes on with uh, with Cyberfrog and Salamandroid and the rest of the crew. Okay, let's see. What else have we got? Also in the Cyberfrog space, we have Heartsick Horror. Now, this was the Halloween offering. So around October was when uh, Ethan Van Skyver was, uh, was offering this one. And... This turned out to be kind of a disappointment. And what's really funny, God, there's somebody who's like doing the lawn outside and it's starting to really get on my nerves. Um, this turned out to be kind of a disappointment. And what's kind of amazing is that he's making another printing of this. He's actually going to make a hardback printing of this or at least a new edition of it. Um, and I think it was because the colorist was not satisfied with the job that he did on the interiors, which I don't really think is necessarily justified. I think he did just fine as far as the the, the coloring goes. But what was lacking in Heartsick Horror was it's being really a story. <laughs> uh, and it's, and it's because com combined with Death Sting and how Death Sting wound up being kind of just a you know, starting out really good and then just kind of plopping at the end. And how this one never really takes off. Uh, it never really turns into, it never really turns into a story. And that, that to me is ironic because I know one of the complaints that, that Ethan makes constantly about ISOM number one or just ISOM in general is that, you know, there's no story there. There's no story. Well, there's, there's, there's no story here either. I mean, the back of the uh, the second feature in here, which is called uh, Bear, uh, Bear Circumstances, um, there's a story to that one, 
uh, I mean, basically a guy comes into town and, or into the community where uh, Heather and Lily and all of them were, are, are, are living now. And at this point, Cyberfrog has become kind of a member of the community. And you really don't know in Wrecked Planet how much time passes in Cyberfrog 2. That's kind of one thing that's a little bit falling down on the job in, in Wrecked Planet 2 is you don't really know how much time Cyberfrog actually spends with the community before he is uh, attacked by the Vespas. And uh, there is a sense from both Heart Sick Horror and from the Deleted Scenes book that he was actually there for quite a while. But it's hard to really make that connection in the book because there's not there's not a lot of, you know, there's not like kind of a months later kind of tag that goes on, at least unless I missed it in Wrecked Planet. But in, in order for there to be a story, something has to change. Now, Heart Sick Horror tries to tell a story, but it kind of falls down on the job because it just shows Heather at various stages of her life um, meeting uh, Lily's dad and then marrying him, having Lily, and then, you know, telling him tales about Cyberfrog. And then that fateful day when uh, when Matt, or not Matt, I'm sorry. That I, I keep wanting to call him Matt because in, in the Diary of Heather Swain, which is the kind of companion piece to Cyberfrog Blood Honey, and it's considered kind of the, the, the canonical Cyberfrog 1.5, in the Diary of Heather Swain, there's a scene where she meets someone named Matt and... Behind him is a picture, or is a is a vision of Ben Riley, who is Deathfly, and so I thought that Matt was her husband, and that that this was their meeting, and it turns out that's not the case. That uh, she actually met a guy named Harold several years later after she had joined the community, and uh, so so I get confused when whenever I'm I'm trying to think of uh, of her husband because. Deathfly obviously makes quite a showing in this book, but it's all really, as I know people on Ethan's live stream have already revealed, it's all really mostly going on in, inside Heather's head that, that Deathfly is the representation of her feelings of abandonment and, and loneliness. And these things, this, this grows over time as, you know, her husband disappears and then she's left alone to, to, to raise Lily and, there is this temptation that she has inside her that is growing constantly. And, and it just basically, it ends with Cyberfrog's return and she's just kind of questioning, you know, well, is everything going to be okay from now on? And I'm like, all right, well, is it? I mean, you haven't told me anything. All you basically said is uh, uh, she repeats the line from Wrecked Planet where she says, uh, I've been absolutely terrified every single, every single day since you've been gone. And I guess this is kind of supposed to be an expansion on that scene going into her head, going more into what's in her head uh, that she reveals to Cyberfrog. I don't know whether she tells him this outright, but it just winds out being a revelation that we kind of already knew. I mean, we learn a little bit about her husband. And, and then there's also kind of echoes of what was perhaps Ethan's first marriage in uh, Heartsick Horror where she's talking to to Harold and saying, you know, did we just kind of happen to each other? You know, and and uh, we, we weren't really in love or, uh, I don't know, maybe that's something that, that reflects. A lot of people write from their experience, and so I'm just kind of hypothesizing that, really. So I really wasn't impressed with uh, with Heartsick Horror. I mean, graphically, it's, it's a beautiful book, but story-wise, there's no there there. And I felt kind of like, okay, why, why did I even pick this up? Because you don't show any kind of character development. You just show the events of the person's life, which we kind of could have already assumed for ourselves. And the other story that's in here, uh, Bare Circumstances, it's, it's such a thin story that, you know, you, you pick up this stranger in the woods and then suddenly things start going all, all, all wrong in the community. Could the stranger be to blame? Gee, you think? I mean, 
since everything points to him, um, it's it's not really much of a mystery. And the idea that I I feel like there's there there is a theme of you know how does a society that's supposed to be survivalist deal with the problem of free riders, but it's handled so loosely that it it, it isn't it isn't handled in any really satisfying way. So, so this book, I don't know. I mean, the, he's, he's doing a campaign now to basically fund the race car stuff or, or that, that campaign I think has already funded the race car stuff that, that was done with uh, Camelot so far. Um, but it's going to contain this, uh, the, the, the new campaign that is up is, or is, is going to contain this. It's going to be recolored, remastered. Um, although I think the, the coloring was adequate myself and it's going to contain this and it's going to contain some art and it's going to contain a story from the last of the cyber frog supplementals, which is the cyber frog to deleted scenes. And the story that is going to be reprinted in there is called numb. And it too is not much of a story. It basically shows cyber frog asleep and then he reveals that, you know, he's horribly angry at having, you know, at the Vispas having taken the world from him. And so he goes out to hunt something, you know, anything, something, something to take his mind off the fact that he's disconnected from Chelsin. He feels disconnected from the world now. He barely feels connected to this new community that he's in. And so he's going to go out hunting. And that's it. So what were we supposed to gain from that? I mean, that it is a deleted scene, so it wasn't something that actually made it into the book. But why are you showing us this to begin with? I mean, there is a, a very real sense to this deleted scenes book that we're getting shown a little bit too much about how the sausage is made. Um, the first book about Merchantville or the first story about Merchantville is I just don't. I just can't fathom why it is he even sought to include this because what gets left out is just kind of so banal. The next story, which has to do with, um, because there's three stories in here. Numb was what was the last story. Then you had Merchantville, which was the first story. And then you have a middle story. And the middle story is actually not bad. Because what you have is Cyberfrog playing soccer with the kids in the community, and it shows him becoming steadily more accepted as his, you know, fun personality rubs off on them. So I didn't have so much of a problem with that. In fact, that was a, that was a deleted scene that was so that that was good enough that it it probably actually could have been been included in the book if it was just a little bit more seamlessly interwoven with it. I mean, the way that it, it plays out in this particular story uh, is it, it, it's more standalone. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it wouldn't weave well with Wrecked Planet as it is. But it was good enough that it kind of made me feel like, oh, well, it's, it's too bad that, you know, that story wasn't in the actual book because that would have at least shown a little more solidifying between the of the relationship between Lily and Cyberfrog, which is something that kind of sort of gets covered in uh in Wrecked Planet, but not not to any great degree. I mean you almost you almost get to feel that it's time that really seals the deal bet between them than any particular one experience. Um whereas in this one well, but in this one though, in the in the, uh, in the bowl, see what it was it called? Picnic is the is the name of the story. Let me just read the, the description over. This is an extended sequence from Wreck Planet in which Cyberfrog completely wins over the kids of the community and also the friendship of Lily Owen. It's fun to see him showing off his powers to the delight of the children. And there's a lot to like about the scene, but the story arrives where it needs to go with Lily finally bonding with Cyberfrog without these extra five pages. And that's true, but I think I think in Wrecked Planet there is kind of a sense of overarching dread that you just kind of want to build and build and build. And this might have broken that chain if he had included that story. So it's probably good that he left it out. 
uh, and and uh, it's not, but it is nice to see print in some other form. The other two stories, though, uh, I, I I don't even know what was the appeal of those, and the the fact that he is going to take like what was probably the worst of the three, which was numb, and and reprint that along with Heart Sick Horror. I mean, no, that's that, that's the wrong one to pick. I mean, the, the picnic story would have been the right one to pick, although it's completely out of keeping with uh, with the theme of a uh, heart sick horror. I mean, I guess I guess numb would have been is something more thematically in tune with the heart sick horror idea of their their internal struggles with their loneliness and 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 uh, sense of desperation and disconnection. Um, at the same time, the the stories themselves feel lonely and disconnected and and kind of desperate to to say something and yet they don't say anything uh big robot news today evs does have a really good colorist yeah i mean he does he does a good job the only time in salamandroid death sting that i do have a, a little bit of a problem with the colors is when salamandroid lets go with his purple fire and and like i'm looking at this this particular page and he's just letting go completely. And I'm looking around and I'm like, I can't tell anything at this point. In fact, I couldn't even tell because he's got like the letters covering up the uh, the separation line between the two dialogue balloons. I couldn't tell that this was like two different panels. Um, so this was, this was an area where it would have been nice to see a little bit more color separation in some way, shape, or form. But I'm not sure if that's... Yeah, he's even got even at the bottom, you know, the 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 line of separation is partially obscured by the by the lettering. And I'm like, damn, you know, it all just looks like one big smush of purple. But otherwise, the, yeah, the colors are good. So basically, let me just wrap up by saying that uh, if you have bought Cyberfrog Two Wreck Planet, and you have not bought any of the supplementals, here's what I will say. Salamandroid Death Sting, absolutely essential. You should pick this up. Uh, the other two books, Heartsick Horror and whoops, Heartsick Horror and Deleted Scenes, you can give them a pass. I mean, the, the, these are not. There's nothing in those books that is really essential to understanding the story of what goes on behind wrecked planet and what you find in there is kind of underwhelming uh even though it's visually appealing in the case of the heart sick horror sequence because you do get a lot of like single page uh spreads that are like i think it was what what was it uh was kelsey shannon the one who did this one or was this no this was ej morgus art by ej morgus and i, and I gotta tell you it, it it is really impressive when you realize that there are two people on the planet who are capable of putting out detailed artwork, the likes of which Ethan Manskyver is known for producing. So, you know, hats off to this guy. I mean, I don't know if he's got any, like, books of his own that he's producing, but that's 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 a hell of a talent right there to be able to, to, to pull that kind of stuff off. All right, so so that's, uh, that's the basic verdict. Uh, Salamandroid Death Sting, definitely pick that up. The other two, take them or leave them.